Welcome to Reread. We are back talking about the X-Wing Rogue Squadron comic book series. And the next four issues are in the Empire Service. This is the first introduction of Baron Fail. Uh, I love the cover of the first one because it's his TIE Fighter showing a bunch of X-Wings and Y-Wings. <laughs> uh, little marking like kills on the side of the TIE Fighter. We've seen this on X-Wings a couple of times as TIE Fighters and as Wedge has two Death Stars on there. But uh, it's, it was nice to see that flip around. There's a lot of good covers. I will say this. There's a lot of good covers in the X-Wing Rose Squadron comic book series. Uh, in fact, I think one of the other ones, one of the next ones on there, has a um, nice uh, images of TIE Uglies, which are just mashups of all the vehicles with a TIE uh, pod in the middle as the um, co uh, cockpit. Anyway, uh, the rogues are attacking Brintel 4, uh, it is held by Admiral Isoto, who is an idiot, and Sait Pestage, who runs the Empire right now with the help of uh, Yasan Isard, is saying, wait, we shouldn't have Isoto uh, defend them because he's an idiot. He'll blow it. And Brentel IV is a bunch of rich people, you know, in the Empire. And Isard's convincing him that, well, the people love Isoto, and we need to show that he's not that good. So let's have him fail, you know, and then come to the rescue later on. And maybe that will discredit this, gener uh, this admiral and we can get someone better in there. And that's the Sarge plan. But, and of course the uh, rebels, the rogue squadron can't believe that Asoto is going to be leading uh, the defense of Brento 4. They're like, oh, this will be easy because he's an idiot. And of course he makes idiotic moves that hurts the planet. But then Asar goes, oh yeah, well, you know what? They, they still love Asoto. He's like, Really? Even though he failed, yeah, but we, we sent Baron Fell over there, and Baron Fell kind of saved the day. So it kind of made him look good overall, and, and St. Pessage can't believe it. So he's like, well, talk to the people. See if we can convince them differently. And so Asar goes to the people and says, can't do anything about it. He's still, you know, State, State Pessage is still a fan of Asoto. And Brentel 4, the people of Brentel 4 are angry because they hate him. So it's basically Asar playing both sides as a power grab to get rid of Sate Pestage, which is really good. This is all leading up to the ascension of Yasan Asard, which we know about in the X-Wing novels. That's really the only connection <laughs> that these books are going to have to the novels. Now, one of the things, uh, at the very end, when uh, Baron Fell gets uh, defeated and captured by Rogue Squadron, Wedge goes in there to talk to Baron Fell. He says, you called upon me? He said, yeah. He said, I, he said, I told my wife that if I ever saw you, I'd, I'd, I'd give you a message. He went, I don't know your wife. He went, he said, yeah, you do. It's your sister. And that's kind of how it ends. Like, oh, no, what? Wedge has a sister. And on top of that, she's married to Baron Fell. How did all this happen? Well, of course, you're like, wait, when did, she have a, when did Wedge have a sister? Because in none of the stuff leading up to this, have we ever seen Wedge uh, with a sister or even mention a sister? Now... Michael Stackpole has a lot of explaining to do, and that's what he's going to do for the next couple of comic book stories. But I do want to talk about one thing that I found interesting, and I failed to mention it in the last um, X-Wing com comic review, but they mentioned that Y-Wings are slowly being replaced by B-Wings. And in the, in the comic series earlier this, they had an argument about what was better, Y-Wing or B-Wing. And they're making all these art, and I like, it was just for like one page. These two pilots are arguing which one's better. And of course, the B-Wing's a lot better, the Y-Wing's outdated, but some people still love the Y-Wing's. And they say that the Rebellion is slowly upgrading, when they have the money, Y-Wing squadrons to B-Wing's. This part of the lore is so fascinating to me. I always wanted them to write a story of the last Y-Wing squadron in the Rebellion, before they all moved them over to B-Wing. I think that would have been interesting. Like Michael Stackpole's X-Wing series, you could have had a Y-Wing series that eventually turned into a B-Wing series, you know? And then maybe some guy transfers it's an A-Wing series. You know, I want, I want to hear about all uh, the fighters from the Rebellion. But this whole... And, and, and the rogues are flying Y-Wings here. They're flying with a Y-Wing squadron. And B-Wings are mentioned a little bit here and there. But I love that type of history about the Y-Wing being replaced by the B-Wing and everything going on right now, which we know is not going to happen for years because I guess the Rebellion can never get up enough money because we see Y-Wings for years later on. But still, that part is very fascinating and no one ever addresses it. No one ever addressed it. Of course, there's a million things they could have addressed. This is just one of them. But for me, I always found it fascinating in the last story arc and in this one.
Uh, overall, I thought the story was okay. Of course, the introduction of Baron Fail, we're about to get, you know, really uh, a real good treat in the next issue. But for right now, the series is on a little bit of a high note, of course, after what it was left off with that terrible last story arc, or the past two were going to go in, going down the dumps, this one is quite an improvement. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.